Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'd like to cover the five major domesticated species of peppers. So the goal of this video is to bring awareness to the vast world of peppers. In my opinion, if you're gonna grow peppers, why not grow something that you can't find at the supermarket? There are just so many varieties out there and you can get seeds pretty easily no matter where you live in the world. So I'm just gonna go alphabetically through the five major species. I'll go through the name of the species, what it means, the backstory and the origin of the pepper species, a range of the heat level of the peppers within the species, the plant size and growing conditions, and of course, some of the popular varieties that are within each species. And then of course, I'll go through some varieties that are not so common in each species and maybe give you some ideas on what you can grow. And at the very end, I'll cover some seed suppliers. And before we get started, please subscribe to Pepper Geek. This channel is all about growing peppers and helping you get better harvests and healthier plants. So thanks for subscribing. First up is the Capsicum annuum species, and this is actually by far the most common species in the world. So the name means annual, which is a misnomer because these plants are actually perennial plants, but they were grown as annual plants in Europe, hence why the name annuum was born. The origin of the species is South America, and you're gonna hear that a lot. The origin of most pepper species is thought to be South America and Central America. Heat levels of the annuum species ranges anywhere from zero, no heat at all, all the way up to 50,000, 60,000 Scoville units. The plant sizes are relatively small, sometimes medium, anywhere from two feet to about four feet in height, depending on the variety. You've heard of most of these, the bell pepper, the jalapeno, the serrano pepper, the fresno pepper, the poblano pepper, the cayenne pepper, and the banana pepper all are within the annuum species. There's a reason it's so appealing. These peppers are crunchy and they can be spicy. They can be purely sweet, like the red bell pepper. They're just very versatile peppers and it's no wonder that they dominate supermarket shelves. The jalapeno was born in Mexico and it is very suitable for hot and dry climates. So if you live in Texas, if you live in New Mexico, the jalapeno and other similar varieties are very suitable for those climates. There are also several uncommon varieties that are within the annuum species. These include the fish pepper, which has this beautiful variegated foliage with white and green leaves. And the variegation transfers to the peppers as well. They ripen from a whitish green all the way through to a deep red color. They're very productive, relatively small plants, great for a patio or a potted pepper plant. Another is the Lesia pepper, which we grew for the first time last year. It's this beautiful deep red bell-like pepper, but it has this teardrop shape to it almost like a heart, and the flavor is incredibly sweet, just like a red bell, but even a little sweeter, I would say. Who would have thought these huge peppers existed because you'd never see them in the supermarket? Another is the, and I'm gonna butcher this name, I promise, the Paradis Fructiger pepper. It's definitely a German name for the pepper, uh, but we grew it last year, and they look almost like heirloom tomatoes from Italy, and again, very crunchy, thick walls, and sweet peppers. Very easy to grow, just like a bell pepper, but much different looking. Uh, this is just scratching the surface of the annuum species. There are hundreds of varieties, so I encourage you to explore them yourself. Okay, moving on to species number two, Capsicum baccatum species comes from South and Central America, and the name means berry-like, owing to the fact that many of the peppers that come from this species kind of look like little berries. Heat levels in this species range from pretty hot to very hot, anywhere from 10,000 Scovilles all the way up to 75 plus thousand Scoville units. And the plants are very large and they take a long time to produce ripe pods. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're planning on growing a baccatum variety. You might wanna plant a few weeks early. They're also known as ahi peppers and they're very common in South America to this day. One of the common varieties is the ahi limon or ahi lemon pepper. They're known to be crunchy, fruity, flavorful, delicious, and a little bit spicy. And the plants are also very prolific. So if you can grow them, I highly recommend them because you'll get a lot of peppers. Two other common varieties are the sugar rush varieties, which are relatively new. There's the sugar rush peach, sugar rush red, and then the bishop's crown, which has a very strange shape to it. You can see where it got its name. Some less common varieties are the Brazilian starfish. They're prolific and delicious, and they look very interesting. One other baccatum variety that is a product of crossbreeding is the sugar rush striped pepper, which is relatively new to the market. Very interesting looking pepper with stripes of orange and red. If you're lucky, you can find seeds on the internet. We were lucky enough to find some and we'll be growing them for the first time this year and apparently very tasty and very hot too. Okay, moving on to our third species, the Capsicum chinense species. 
The name actually means from China, although this again is a misnomer. The pepper species was named by someone who discovered the pepper while he was traveling in the Caribbean, but for some reason he was led to believe that they were from China. However, the species definitely does have origins in South America. It's commonly thought that they have origins in the Amazon basin, and many land varieties still grow wild in South America and the Caribbean. Now, Capsicum chinense is notorious for having some of the hottest peppers in the world, actually the hottest peppers in the world, hands down, and heat levels can range anywhere from zero Scoville units all the way up to two million Scoville heat units plus. So these are brutally hot peppers, but they also have amazing, interesting flavors, which makes the Chinen species one of the most appealing to pepper enthusiasts. The plants are also large. You might think a plant that grows these super hot peppers and smaller peppers might be smaller, but the plants can actually grow to be five, six feet tall in a single season. Some of the most common varieties that you've probably heard of are the habanero pepper, which you can find at supermarkets, also the scotch bonnet pepper, which comes from the Caribbean, and the notorious ghost pepper, which once held the title of the hottest pepper in the world. Some less common varieties include the CGN 21500. Actually, I have a plant right here. This is our bonsai plant. This is a CGN 21500. The leaves can have some dark coloration to them, and they ripen from a green color to a peachy color, and they're just beautiful little pods. Extremely productive and relatively big plant. Another worth mentioning is the Pimenta denied pepper, which was discovered in South America. The plants have pretty much jet black foliage and peppers, and the denied pepper has been used to cross-pollinate with other Chinens varieties, creating some of the most amazing peppers out there. If you're interested, one of those varieties is called the Black Panther pepper. We recently wrote an article about that on Pepper Geek. You can see pictures of the pepper there and learn more about it. Now, if you don't like spicy food, but you still wanna try the amazing flavors of Chinen species peppers, I'd recommend checking out the the habanada pepper, that's a very commonly available seed that you can find on the internet. Or the Numex Suave Orange is another variety we're growing for the first time this year. I'm excited to see what comes of that plant because it claims to have only 800 Scoville heat units, which is just about what a poblano has, but the flavor profile of the habanero pepper or chinen species. And that was developed by the Chili Pepper Institute at New Mexico State University. You can buy lots of cool peppers from them and I'll leave links down below. Okay, moving on to our fourth pepper species, the Capsicum frutescens species. The name means shrub-like, and they are from, again, South and Central America. Heat levels range anywhere from 20,000 to 50,000 Scoville units, so relatively hot peppers. And the plant sizes are small, anywhere from about a foot and a half to three feet tall, and they tend to be very prolific. Now, within the Capsicum frutescens species, there are really only two varieties that are extremely common. One is the African bird's eye chili, also known as the peri-peri pepper. It's used in Africa to make the very popular peri-peri sauce. And the other is the Tabasco pepper, which you will likely recognize as the main ingredient in Tabasco brand hot sauce. Those peppers are still grown widely throughout Louisiana to produce that hot sauce, but apart from those two varieties, there really aren't many others to speak of. For this reason, the Capsicum frutescens species is still considered to be mostly a wild species. Many of the varieties out there actually still drop their fruits when they are ripe, and that's just a common characteristic of wild pepper species. One uncommon variety I did discover when I was researching Capsicum frutescens was the, and I will butcher this too, Kabai Barung Ungi. It's a Malaysian pepper variety with amazingly beautiful flowers that have yellow and purple accents to them. And the pods ripen from purple to orange to a deep red color. Very interesting, and I have really high hopes for what the future brings in the frutescent species. And last but definitely not least is the Capsicum pubescent species. The name means short-haired or pubescent, and it's with good reason. These plants actually have very small hairs on the leaves. They're also known as trichomes. The origin of the pubescent species is likely Peru or Bolivia, and they're still very popular throughout South and Central and even parts of North America. Heat levels range anywhere from 20,000 all the way up to 100,000 Scoville, so these are relatively spicy peppers, and the plant size can be very large, anywhere from four feet all the way up to eight feet, and the plants tend to have a vining characteristic that is different from any of the other species. Common varieties are the Rokoto or the Lokoto pepper, depending on where you are in the world. They're also called the Manzano pepper in parts of Mexico. Owing to their fruit-like shape, they almost look like an apple or a pear. Now the pubescent species is really off in its own world here. They can't cross-pollinate with any of the other species that we've talked about and they have some very unique characteristics. For example, the flowers of these plants are completely purple. As you can see here, this is the mini ricotto brown that we grew last year, producing flowers. They're just gorgeous. And the seeds from all of these pepper varieties are black. 
but they also take a very long time to germinate. Capsicum pubescens is actually one of the only species that is known to do best in cooler climates owing to their mountainous origins. So if you live in a cooler climate or you have a shorter growing season, you can start these seeds indoors very early and you can feel safe knowing that your plants won't be too stressed out by temperatures in the 60s where other varieties might start losing flowers or stressing out in other ways. Okay, so those are the five main species, but there are dozens of other species within the capsicum genus and I'll cover just one of them for you today because we're actually growing this variety for the first time this year and that's the capsicum galapagoense species. There's just one pepper variety within this species and it is endemic to the Galapagos Islands like many amazing Amazing varieties of plants and animals. One interesting fact is that the plant has lots of trichomes, just like the pubescent species, lots of hairs on the leaves. And apparently when the leaves are brushed, it releases a fragrance, a, a nice aroma into the air. So we'll definitely be covering that species. We're growing it this season, like I said. So we'll share that with you this year. Now I'd like to share two seed suppliers. I don't really like to share seed suppliers or specific products because some of the websites we buy seeds from are run by just one person and things can change. But I will share some that you can look at today because they're just so awesome. One is White Hot Peppers and they're located in the United States. They specialize in the Capsicum chinen species. They have lots of cool cross varieties and really hot peppers, but they also have Bacatum species and Annuum peppers. So I encourage you to check them out if you're located in North America. Another is fataliseeds.net. They are not located in the United States. So if you do live in the US, you will have to worry about the federal order that was implemented recently. This requires international seed sellers to ship their pepper seeds with a phytosanitary certificate. And a lot of seed suppliers simply can't afford to do this process. But Fatali Seeds is still very cool and worth checking out. They have lots of cool capsicum bacatum varieties. That's actually where we got our sugar rust striped seeds. One of the varieties we're most excited to grow this year. So check them out in the links below. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something and are maybe considering growing something other than bell peppers or jalapeno peppers. Although they are very tasty, I have to admit. But perhaps you'll grow something out of the ordinary this year or next. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'd love to try to help you out. Thanks for watching Pepper Geek and I'll see you next time.